Hello and welcome to another Scriptcase Fundamentals training. In this class, you are going to learn how to deploy your applications. Deployment is the final step of your project so that your applications will run on the production environment and be available for use. Basically, it is the development's final phase where the Scriptcase developer will essentially publish the project to a web server for live user access. This server being correctly set up to guarantee the perfect functionality of all applications. Now saying that Scriptcase does have some pre-requirements, which I will cover in a moment, but in general you will find that Scriptcase can be deployed on the majority of hosting servers without any issues with the minimum and common configurations. The prerequisites to deploy a Scriptcase project are a web server with Apache or IIS for example, the PHP version 5.6 or later, access to the project database that is going to be used within the project environment. Scriptcase has two ways to deploy your project. The typical deployment and the advanced deployment. The typical deploy is the type of deployment where the production environment is automatically set up with all the common libraries used in the applications. In case you need to customize the deployment directories like the image directory or the temporary directory for example, this type of deployment is then not recommended considering that these directories are set by default not allowing customization of the paths. If you do however want to change the paths you will need to select the advanced deployment. So let's start and deploy our applications which we have created during this training. The first you will need to access your project and then within the project that you want to deploy select the project menu item and then deploy applications. After clicking on the deploy applications menu item you will have the option to deploy all applications from the project or you can select the individual applications that you want to deploy. In this case I want to deploy all applications applications, so I will go ahead and click the next button. Next you need to select the type of deployment that you want to use. So for this example I will select the typical, the advanced we will cover in a few moments. So for now I will click the next button. Now here we need to select our initial application. So here for instance I would select the app login which was created by the security system within the previous video. Selecting that will make it the first application which is viewed when accessing your domain. In this step we can also define if you want to send the common libraries with the project. It is also necessary to select the common libraries which are the files responsible for the production environment. It is then necessary to select the common files for the images, CSS and custom messages to be sent at the moment of the deployment. As I am using a Windows operating system I will select the Windows option and then click the next button. In this step you need to select the way you want to generate the package which will include all of the applications. Generally you can select create zip with applications or generate the tar with applications. During generation it will then display a report of the deployed applications including the download link for the download of the project which we will see shortly. The file zip or tar generated must be decompressed only within the development server to avoid corrupt files. Uploading the single zip file will also improve within the upload process. For the deploy on a server directory if I select this option. Here we need to inform the absolute path to the deployment directory. Now this option should only be used in the case of deployment within the same server where script case has been installed. Otherwise this option will not be valid and not possible. The next option is the deploy to an FTP server. This option generates the files directly on the FTP remote server. Here you need to inform the domain or IP address of the FTP server the FTP username and password as well as the folder where the project will be deployed. To use this option it is necessary that you have a server that provides the FTP access with a user that has read and write permissions. The same way we use the SFTP option. Note to use the SFTP option it is necessary that you have the correct permission to write on the server folder again. Okay so I will deselect these options which I've just shown you and then continue continue with the next button. So now the applications will be deployed and generated within a zip file. This process can take a few moments depending on how many applications you have available within your project. At the end of the process you will receive a full report with all of the applications that have been deployed including a download link of the project ready to be published. 
Clicking that will present you with the download option and then you can save it to your drive. On opening of the zip file, you will see all applications available for your project. Now this zip file can then be uploaded to the server route that you have created and have prepared for your project. There you can then decompress the deployment files. At the end of the decompression process, you then just need to access the project via your web browser. Entering the URL will then take you to your predefined first page. From there you'll be able to continue with the setup process, define your database and begin using your project. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the advanced deployment. So if I go back to project and then deploy applications again, and this time I will select applications and go next. And now here we can see which applications we want to deploy if we want to select individual applications. Now generally you would use this option when you have new applications to add to your project. Here for instance, I can select multiple or I can select them individually and then have them included within my project. So here I will go next and this time instead of selecting the typical deployment I will also select the advanced deployment. I will also go next. Now the advanced deployment is a deployment that allows the script case user to select the default directories for the project. Essentially the image directory, the document directory, the prod directory which has the common libraries and then this type of Deployment is then recommended if you need to specify these directories for the web server to be used by your project. So once we've got this file, we have then first of all the option to specify a template name for this deployment selection, meaning that later we can come back, select the template and deploy with our pre-configuration. So here I will leave that blank for the time being and go next. Now it is important to note here that it is required to create the image documents and temporary directories on your production server. Remembering to inform the absolute path of the documents directory relating to the production environment as well as then the common libraries folder. It is necessary to take the prod folder generated at the end of the deploy to the server in this case, we are using different directories from the previous example. Now do observe that when you finish the deployment process, you will see a link to download and deploy the common files. Check the option, deploy with common files, CSS, buttons, images, and messages. Okay, so let's have a quick look at each of these required folders that we have here. So we have the common libraries folder. Now here, for instance, we could change the location of this. I will leave them as default because I don't have anything set up. But for your own purposes, you will have specific directories or file paths where you will need to have the documents and images, temporary files all stored. So returning back to the folders, the common libraries folder is the library and service packages used by the deployed application. Here it is important to inform the relative path to the production directory. The example would be forward slash production, forward slash prod, or simply forward slash prod. For the images folder, this is used for the uploading service of your project. So this folder is where you will store all the images. For instance, when an application uses a field of the type image, it informs the relative path to the image directory in this case being script case forward slash file forward slash image of course you can change the file location and specify your own the next folder is the temp folder so this folder is where all the generated temporary files will be stored during the application's runtime the files of this directory will be removed periodically according to the specific specific settings applied to your project. By default, it is 120 minutes. Now here you can inform the relative path to the temporary directory, example being script case forward slash temp, production forward slash temp, or simply temporary files or temp. The next folder location is then the documents folder. This folder is used for the uploading service also, and is where all of the documents will be stored when an application uses a field of the type document file name. So here, it will store the absolute path to the document directory should for instance provide the drive location as well as then the folder path. Now do note that the forward slash from each of these, so where we have forward slash script case, forward slash prod, that this first forward slash means indicates the web server route and is used for relative paths. Okay, so at this stage I'm going to click next again and now we have the option to change the name of our connection. So we had named it, so during this training we had named it fundamentals 
and I could here now change the name of the database connection that will be used. I will call this TPL to match the template that we have here. And I will then just go ahead and click the next button. Okay, so we now have the same options as we had seen previously. And again, I will go ahead and just generate with a zip file. And as previous, we have a full report with all the applications I had selected during this example deployed and including a download link of the project, as well as a link to download the common libraries separately within a zip file. We have the zip file, which we can download, a report of the processing time and applications that have been deployed. But this time we also have the option to download the common library separately within a zip file. Now the common libraries are very important for your project and are required to run the applications on the production environment. That is why they are required to upload also with the deployment. Now the advanced deploy requires that you download the production environment, that is the package that contains these common libraries. If you do not want to download the production environment from the link generated by the deploy, you can download it also by going to the Scriptcase website and selecting download others. If you deploy the project again, you do not need to download the common libraries a second or third time. But this information is not valid if the common libraries were updated within a script case release. So it is important whenever your script case development environment has been updated that then you also deploy any previous projects with the new common libraries that have been included and updated. Thank you for watching this part of the Scriptcase Fundamentals training. I hope to see you again soon in the next class.